Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the program. A lot of people have very strong opinions when it comes to democratic elections. Because we elect our leaders, we think their authority comes from us, that we, the people, are in control. But in Daniel 4, God says the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. In Romans 13, the Apostle Paul said the powers that be are ordained of God. On today's program, we'll examine the recent U.S. election from God's perspective and consider the impact it will have on Bible prophecy. The Trumpet Daily. For the second time in less than five months, a democratic election has shaken the geopolitical order in Europe. First it was Brexit, and uh, now it's Donald Trump's stunning victory in November. Why are we experiencing so many dramatic events? Who or what is behind it? Well, we talk about these dramatic events daily on our radio program, the Trumpet Daily Radio Show, and you can get to that program, by the way, right here in the UK, even though it's broadcast from, from the United States. You can listen to the live stream at kpcg.fm and also at our website, thetrumpet.com. There's so much happening. So many prophecies are being fulfilled. And, and how will these most recent dramatic events impact in-time Bible prophecies? We talked to you about Brexit a few, a few months ago. In fact, Herbert Armstrong, in this, this wonderful book, we've offered this before on TV, he was right. There's a section in there that talks about how he was saying back in the 1950s that with this oncoming union in Europe, Britain would be no part of it. How did he know? Well, he based his forecast on numerous Bible prophecies. And then we come up to June 2016, and sure enough, Britain shocks the world and decides it wants out of the European Union. Well, now look at the most recent uh, U.S. election. You talk about shockwaves. Donald Trump's vision is, is, at least judging by what he says, it's quite a lot different from his predecessor. How is this going to impact the world? How will it impact the United States? Well, just look at the, the reaction so far uh, here in Europe. For sure, a difficult moment in the relationship. It hasn't been that good. I think most European leaders are shocked that someone like Donald Trump could, could win the presidency. The German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, uh, she came out and basically offered a, a conditional cooperation. She said that, well, if this, if this new leader uh, upholds democracy and, and freedom and human dignity, as she said, regardless of ancestry, skin color, religion, or gender, you know what she's getting at there, sexual orientation, well, if he abides by these norms that we uphold in Germany, then yes, I'll cooperate. Germany will cooperate. Mrs. Merkel said, on the basis of these values, I offer the future president of the United States of America, Donald Trump, close cooperation. Now just think about that for a moment. Since the end of World War II, it's the United States of America that's been responsible for rebuilding Germany. It's the United States that's been responsible for protecting Germany. It's the United States that was largely responsible for German reunification. And yet now here we are in 2016 and you have a German leader uh, tepidly offering conditional support for the new, uh, the new U.S. president. It's not that long ago that it, that it would have been the other way around where an American leader would insist upon this, this, and this and say that, that we'll offer support if, if you do this. But today we're living in a world where everything's upside down, and we see all these earth-shaking developments. We're not here on this program to take sides with one leader over the other. We're just here to tell you 
how these events will impact prophecies or what Bible prophecy has to say about these events. Notice what it says here at Project Syndicate. It says the EU's, this is, again, following the election of uh, Donald Trump in November, the EU's territorial integrity itself is now at stake. Trump has made it abundantly clear that his foreign policy priorities do not include European security. He doesn't recognize NATO's strategic necessity, and he's shown an interest in transatlantic relations only when he has alluded to unpaid bills. A Trump presidency will lead to an epic geopolitical shift. For the first time since 1941, Europe cannot rely on the U.S. defense umbrella. It now stands alone. I mean, the first time since 1941, Europe can't rely upon this U.S. defense umbrella. That's significant. These, as I say, are earth-shaking developments. Now, that umbrella was there following World War II, not only to protect Europe, but it was there to prevent another empire from rising out of the heart of Europe. And so what happens when that umbrella is removed? Well, we've got quite a few reports to bring to your attention today. This is the same source. The EU should treat Trump's election as a wake-up call to take charge of its own destiny. The EU can no longer wait to build its own European defense community and develop its own security strategy. The EU must become independently capable of ensuring its own security. Anything less will be insufficient to secure its territory. This is a different but vital decision, a difficult rather, but vital decision that the EU has postponed for too long. Now that Trump has been elected, it can wait no longer. No more delay. I mean, we have to move fast with this. We have to move forward and build up our own defenses for our own security. That's what so many are calling for now as they see these, these massive shifts taking place in the global order of things. The Globe and Mail in Canada, there was an opinion writer there who, who said, well, after this election in America, I have to say that the leader of the free world is now Germany's Angela Merkel. It's no longer the president of the United States. It's Germany that needs to step forward. It's the leader in Germany that needs to be stepping forward. What does that say about the world we live in when more and more nations, here in Europe, even nations around the world, stop looking to the United States? And does it matter? Is it significant? Well, it certainly is, particularly with respect to Europe. When all of these prophecies of the Bible talk about the seventh and final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire to come right out of the heart of Europe, that's why we keep seeing these geopolitical earthquakes. You remove the, the U.S. umbrella, that defense umbrella, and it just gives rise to this seventh and final resurrection. It's talked about right here in Revelation 17. Get your Bible. Read along with me. Verse 12. We've read some of these verses before, but we need to review it. In light of what's happening, Revelation 17, 12 says, And the ten horns which you saw are the ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. That's talking about the resurrected United States of Europe. The final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire. Now that union, once you remove that U.S. defense umbrella, the union's already there, but it's not yet militaristic. That's coming. That's coming. You take away the U.S. defense umbrella, and look at what it opens the way for. Back to uh, another quote. This is the New York Times uh, over in the States. Now, notice what it said. Again, following the election of Trump, it says, Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel has emerged as the last powerful defender of Europe and the transatlantic alliance after the election of Donald J. Trump. But after 11 years in power, she is tired, her associates say, and under siege, seemingly from all directions, that's what the New York Times reports. I mean, she's, she's, according to the Globe and Mail, she's now the leader of the free world. But like the Times brings out, I mean, she's been in office for a long time. And she's facing a lot of crises right now and getting a bit worn down 
and well, as it happens, there's a, another election next year in Germany. Will that be another earth-shaking event? If you've followed this program or if you follow us on that radio program that I talked about earlier, or if you listen to my father's prophecies on the Key of David program in the United States, that also plays on uh, our trumpet.com website, then you know we've been talking about a strong man to emerge out of the heart of Europe, probably from Germany. There's a prophecy in Daniel 8 that speaks to this. It says there, right in that chapter, it's for the, the latter time that this, that this Daniel 8 man, this strong man, is going to emerge right out of the heart of Europe, right out of the heart of that seventh and final resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire. And the Bible says in Daniel, over in chapter 11, that he's going to come in peaceably and he's going to obtain the kingdom by flatteries. He comes in talking about peace, and yet the Bible says he's a vile person. You see that a lot in this world. Leaders that have all of these good intentions or maybe that say just the right things. But then, as Jesus said, when you judge them or evaluate them based on their fruits, look at their actions, look at what they're doing. And it's appalling. God says he's a vile person. And then what happens? Well, there's so many other prophecies that we could get into. A lot of them, though, are talked about in this, in this wonderful booklet. He was right. Herbert Armstrong's been talking about these prophecies for going on eight decades. Well, he died in 1986, but we're just an extension of that work. And so for eight decades, 80 years, we've been talking about these prophecies of God. And now they're coming to pass, continuing in the New York Times. An increasingly divided Europe is looking to Germany, its richest power, to cope with its many problems, some of them long-standing, low growth, a continuing stream of refugees, an increasingly and increasingly angry and nationalistic electorates. It says, and with Mr. Trump advocating America first, this is the New York Times, and questioning the value of the NATO alliance, there is pressure on Germany to take a greater role in European security, always a delicate matter, the New York Times says. Here there's pressure on Germany to step forward, to take the lead on, on European security, and that's a, that's a delicate matter. Why? Well, the Times there is alluding to some fairly recent history, our modern era. You can go right back to the 1940s and see why this is such a delicate matter. Forget about the prophecies of God. I mean, just look at history. And yet, the, the nation of Germany, the leader in Germany, is being urged to take the lead on this, that same piece in the New York Times. It quotes one uh, analyst, one geopolitical analyst in Europe, who said that the, the European Union needs this shock, these elections, Brexit, and now Donald Trump's election. It needs this shock because for decades, he said, the Union has just been paying lip service to things like the European Army. But this jolt can really stir it to action and help to strengthen the Eurozone and help to build an actual European Army. Well, is, is this a good thing? Here again, come back to these prophecies. Revelation 17, Daniel 2, the image in Daniel 2. Well, because of all these prophecies, here again, Herbert Armstrong, for decades, was talking about this, this split. The United States splitting apart from Germany, no longer being that defense umbrella. It talked about, Mr. Armstrong did, it talk, he talked about Germany uh, uniting. He talked about the Holy Roman Empire bringing those nations in Eastern Europe together with the nations in Western Europe, I've talked about some of these prophecies before on this program. Some of you are aware of it. But going back to the split between the United States and Germany, notice what my father had to say two years ago in the, uh, the Trumpet magazine. He said, the age of American global leadership is drawing to a close. While the Germans might not come out and say so, they're reveling in the fact the U.S. may try and repair relations with its former lover, but irreversible damage has already been done. He's talking about the spying scandal from a couple years ago. And then he says the breakup, which started with the spying scandal, is going to continue to worsen 
until one of America's greatest allies since World War II becomes, once again, its greatest enemy. Now that has been the history. Does it seem far-fetched? Not so much anymore. Maybe back when Herbert Armstrong was talking about this in the 1950s and 60s. But you can't very well scoff today. Look at the United States and the oncoming leadership focusing on America first, turning inward, telling Europe, you take care of yourself, telling Putin and Russia, you can have the Middle East. And how is the world going to react to this? I mean, you look at the world today, and there's already a lot of trouble. Take away the American policeman. Is that going to make the world better? Well, we have a lot to say about that. It's in this book, as I say. There's also another one. This is a brand new booklet by my father called Great Again. I'll talk a little bit more about this in the next segment. But we'll offer both of these to you today. Now, you may already have He Was Right. And if you do, just tell the operator when you call them that you just need the Great Again booklet. This one you don't have because we've never offered it on TV before. But we'll give both of them to you for free. No cost, no obligation, no follow-up. Just call our operators or log on to our website. You can order it online as well or even text us your information and we'll send out this free literature to you today. We'll be right back. The world is taking notice of America's waning influence on global affairs. Europe in particular is alarmed by America's global retreat. How much longer before Europe realizes it can no longer rely on the U.S. defense umbrella? We are witnessing the beginning stages of an epic geopolitical shift. Well over 50 years ago, Herbert W. Armstrong predicted the rise of 10 kings in Europe to be led by Germany, a union of nations in the territory of the old Roman Empire. Using Bible prophecy as his guide, Mr. Armstrong accurately predicted events that are happening now in Europe. To learn more about these many earth-shaking prophecies, request He Was Right. This free booklet remembers five decades of accurate forecasting by Herbert W. Armstrong. In addition to He Was Right, also request Gerald Flurry's new booklet, Great Again. This booklet identifies the causes of America's precipitous decline and offers glorious hope for a brighter tomorrow. Simply follow the information on your screen and request He Was Right and Great Again. To learn more, please visit thetrumpet.com. Today we're trying to get God's perspective on some of these dramatic developments here in the UK, in the United States. And just think about what's happening with this, this change of leadership in the U.S. And, and look at any region around the world today and ask yourself, given the direction that the United States is now heading in, are these dramatic events speeding up prophecies of God, latter-day prophecies of God, or are they slowing them down? Well, if you're a student of Bible prophecy, I think you would agree that you would agree with us that they're speeding up these prophecies. What a dramatic year 2016 has been. You talk now, as I mentioned in the first segment, about America's split with, with Germany, about Germany being, being really pushed to take the lead in Europe, to take the lead role in, in Europe's security situation. A, a delicate matter, as the New York Times said. And then you think about the emergence of a strongman. That's coming right out of the heart of Europe, probably out of Germany, and then the formation of a European army headed up by Germany, the strongest nation without question in Europe. Where's this headed? As I said before, leave aside the Bible and just look at history. There's lots of, of warning signs there. Well, meanwhile, you look at the reaction in, in half of America and then in quite a few uh, nations in Europe, that are just shocked at what's happened with the U.S. election. On the other hand, you have leaders in Russia and China that are delighted to see a, a leader emerge in America who's going to pull back and who's not going to get involved in wars in the Middle East and who's not going to really be the, the world policeman 
I mean, really, the previous administration was going in that direction, too. But now you just see the push in America to focus on the things at home and let the other nations abroad take care of their problems and let them pay for NATO or pay for a European army. Let them defend themselves. Well, it might sound good economically, but where is this leading? Notice Revelation 12 and verse 12. It says here, and therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. So your Bible says the devil is behind so many of these dangerous developments. Now, of course, God above, he's worked out this master plan where he's allowed for Satan to stay on the throne of this earth for a period of 6,000 years. So even there, God's in control. God's allowed it. But Satan, as Revelation 12 brings out, I mean, he knows that his time is about up, ruling over this world. He's the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. He's the prince of the power of the air. It says there in verse 12 that he knows he has but a short time. Back up to verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, that's the spirit that's behind so many of these earth-shaking developments. The new administration coming into the United States is talking about, and half the country believes him. He's talking a lot about making America great again. And, I mean, even that slogan implies that, that he knows and that so many of his supporters know that America's not great today. Why? What has happened? What's happened to the United States in, in recent decades? And really, when you look at all of the problems, forget about what's, what, what Europe's facing. When you look at the problems the United States is facing, you think it's, it's going to be a, a human individual or a, a political party that, that rescues the United States, that makes the United States great again? God answers. No, it's not going to be a human being or a human administration. It's going to take the power of God to make the United States great again. That's what my father talks about in this this booklet. There is hope. I don't want to say that there's no hope, but there are a lot of prophecies that say it's going to get a lot worse. It sure is before it gets better, and we have to, of course, tell you the truth. That's why we're here, as the prophet Isaiah said, to cry out, to cry aloud with this message. That's in Isaiah 58 and verse 1. But let's look over here at at Matthew 24 and uh, start in verse 21. Notice what it says. uh, For then shall be great tribulation. This is Jesus Christ's own prophecy, talking about the end time. You can see it in the first few verses of this chapter. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, no, nor ever shall be. Nothing ever like this in the history of the earth. And other prophecies, Daniel 12, 1, Jeremiah 30 and verse 7 about Jacob's trouble, they chime in with the same kind of language. Nothing ever like this in the history of the earth. And verse 22 it says, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved or saved alive, but for the elect's, the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. See, God has to intervene. God has to intervene and make us great again. But first he has to correct us for all of the evil because we've drifted so far from him. And then the government of Jesus Christ on this earth will set things straight. Let me give you a quote. This is from my father's booklet, Great Again, which we offer to you uh, freely on today's program. It says, Jeremiah 30, this is uh, one of the ones I just mentioned, Jeremiah 37, or the one in Matthew 24, Jesus' prophecy. But it says, Jeremiah 30 prophesies about God bringing the great tribulation on end-time Israel, which is prophetically uh, modern-day America and Britain, uh, the British Commonwealth nations. It says, the Bible shows that this will all happen quickly, and we're getting so close to this time. The seventh resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire is about to burst on the world scene. It's all happening so fast. That's the thing. That's why you've got to really dig into your Bible 
and learn the prophecies of God so that you can know where these events are leading. Look at what's happened in just a, just a matter of months. Look at how the, the world has changed for people here in Britain, for people in the United States. Look at how it's going to dramatically impact the European Union. Verse 29, this is Matthew 24, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then, notice, and then, verse 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Then man will see, one final quote from Great Again, the free booklet we're offering, no political candidate is going to make America great again, no matter what people think. See, we're not here to take sides with one party or the next, with one man over one woman or whoever. No, no political candidate's going to make America great again, no matter what people think. My father says, I'd like to see it happen, but it isn't going to happen, not in this age. Everyone will come to recognize that truth before much longer. God, God will make America great again in the world tomorrow. That's when it will happen. That's why we've got to get our minds on the future and on what God is doing and on the plan that he's working out here below. Well, there's a lot more we could talk about, but we're going to have to to break it off there. Make sure that you contact our operators. Just call the number on your screen and request Great Again. This is my father's latest booklet. I haven't yet offered it on television. And then, of course, this one, one of our most popular booklets, He Was Right. We offer to the, these both, of, these, both of these booklets to you free of charge, without cost or obligation. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.